Hey guys, welcome to week 15. Um, sorry I didn't put out a video for Monday, Tuesday. I was still gone for my knee surgery, but it was the writing prompt, as you see here, um, and some Ed puzzles. And really with the writing prompt, if you pulled up your file for your project, you kind of already have a rough draft for it with your different boxes you filled in a minute about what you used and why. So if you haven't finished that up, there you go. And you've got a couple of Ed puzzles um, on earthquakes, volcanoes, and a little bit on tectonic plates overview. Excuse me. So watch those for me. But as for today, there are several things in here, so let me kind of walk you through it. If you have the ability to print this um, document, go ahead and print it just for ease, but if not, it's really simple to draw. Okay, so like if you don't want to waste the ink, I totally get it. This is something you completely can draw easily, but this is the framework for the notes that we'll take. Okay. And then um, I'm a visual learner and I need pictures, especially of places that I haven't seen before. So this file, the land features, I already have it open here. You might want to look at it now or keep it open as you write your notes and go back and look because it's going to talk about some of the land features, which you already know a lot from social studies and you already know your continent and ocean names. So that's going to be very helpful. But this will help give some context to some of our notes since you weren't listening to me give the full talk and listen to the questions. But let me just kind of run through them real fast so that when you see them on the notes, they'll make more sense. Um, like Antarctica, when we see it on the map, kind of like this red stuff here, it looks like this long, skinny piece of land. And it's not, it's just that's not the view we get. Remember when we take a 3D sphere and put it on a flat rectangle, it's kind of like a funhouse mirror. Something gets distorted. In this case, Antarctica is like cut and rolled out. Think like the roll of those goodness those biscuits like you roll them up crescent rolls that's it it's kind of like that but this is what Antarctica's shape is and it ebbs and flows it gets bigger and smaller depending on how much ice depending on the time of year okay but to give you some context here is a shadow of the United States and printed upon it just so you can have an idea about how big it actually is and then here you've got um, Antarctica notice the darker or the more opaque white pieces versus the translucent that's the ice sheet that gets bigger and smaller. Okay, but that's the South Pole. And on the right, you see the Arctic, like the Arctic Circle, think like the North Pole. Um, that's what it looks like if you were a satellite or the International Space Station looking from above. And you'll notice on the left here, that's North America. And on the right, that's Asia. Okay, but that's just views we don't get to see very often. And here's a hyperlink to a quick bright side video um, where scientists, have, I think this one's right side, as I say that, a video, an informative video about how they found the lowest point, land point, not in the ocean, but land under the ice in Antarctica. So there's a hyperlink there if you want to check that out. Like I said, I'm just going to briefly give you a little bit about these so you have some thoughts in your head as you're doing your notes. A lot of people are familiar with granite, um, like for countertops. Notice how there's lots of different colors. This depends on where they were mined out of the ground and the minerals that were in them. So think about normal table salt versus like it's got a whitish color compared to like Himalayan salt, which is pink because of the minerals that are in the Himalayas that tempt it. Same thing with granite. So different countertops people have that piece of granite came from somewhere else on the planet. Basalt is the ocean floor rock. And it's pretty standard. It's a dark gray like this. You'll see it in some people's landscaping particularly up like by Target and whatnot, they'll use this. It's real pretty dark gray, um, but this is the rock we'll find on the ocean floor. Okay. But these, the next couple slides, are going to take you through some of the landforms that'll be our examples that occur at play boundaries. Okay. So you can come back and look at them. I'm just going to touch on them real fast. Um, the Cascade Mountains, this is the west coast of the United States. Okay. The west coast of the United States, there's the Pacific Ocean. And like Washington State going down, notice the long string of mountains. And Mount St. Helens is one of the more famous ones, also Mount Rainier. Now this happened long before y'all were born, and it's erupted again before you were born, like right before. Um, but notice how after the eruption, it lost like a whole side. Your parents are probably more familiar with this. Um, you can ask them about it. There's all kinds of cool videos on it too. Okay, but this Cascades Mountains is one of our examples in our notes today. Also things, we're going to talk about trenches. 
So this is the Marianas Trench, which is the deepest one on the planet. If you've seen um, Pacific Rim, right, when the, what are they called? the monsters come up and the Jaegers have to fight them like the big machine robots, right? This is the kind of trench we're talking about, like deep, deep, deep in the ocean. Uh, but this is the deepest one. And then there's some comparisons here, just so you can understand how long it is, how deep it is, what's the deepest point. Um, and if you take something like Mount Everest, if we could put that compar comparably next to it, what their difference would be. So it's as almost as deep as Mount Everest is high, which is remarkable. Okay. And oh, sorry, um, Japan will make a volcanic island arc. All right, so it's a string of volcanic islands in a row and you've got two like there's a lot of plates going on. you got the asian plate the philippine plate the pacific plate all working here to make this happen so you can come back to this slide when you get to the example this was neat just we got on a side tangent of the tallest mountains um, for example i'm five three it doesn't matter if i'm sitting i'm standing i'm in a chair i'm still five three but let's say my husband is six two i stand next to him he is taller than me but if I stand in a chair next to him, my head is technically higher in the sky than his. So when you're talking about how tall a mountain is, you have to be very careful. Do you mean the tallest in the sky? You know, we'll talk about elevation and altitude, all right? Or do you mean from base to tip, the greatest distance covered? Like in this graphic here, um, you got Mauna Kea in Hawaii versus Mount Everest. Mount Everest is on the chair like I would be. And here's some of the more famous tall ones. Um, and this is a cool link that's got a lot of information about these mountains and how they got their name and their sizes. Definitely a rabbit hole you can go down. Okay. Um, this is as far as we got today. Uh, here's the Indian plate, sometimes mashed up with the Indo-Australian plate because they're linked together, kind of like Velcro. They, where one goes, the other one follows smashing, literally smashing itself into the Eurasian plate. So there's the Himalayas, which you hear about a lot, okay, and some of the smaller countries that um, interplay. But this is the famous mountain chain. So these are smushing into each other, but notice there's no water around. So that's going to make a difference. The notes themselves, like I said, you could print off the page, or it's just black lines. I would say go ahead and copy this down um, right now. Push pause and then start back up and look at it. Okay. With these, it's got three different convergent boundaries. Okay. So converge literally means the edges are going together. All right. So we're breaking down the word parts. The first combo we have is the oceanic crust and a continental crust. So I gave it some ocean waves. Okay. And so when they come together, the oceanic plate is going to get pulled down by this process of subduction. It's going to go deeper, deeper in the earth, and we know the further you go down, the hotter it gets. So the temperature goes up, and it's going to cause it to melt. But notice it doesn't go straight down. It goes in a diagonal, and it takes a while for it gets far enough down to melt and become magma. And then hot stuff we know, because of convection, likes to rise, and it can come out and cause volcanic mountains. There are different kinds of volcanoes. Some, these are not the technical terms, some are oozers, some are exploders, and some go back and forth. Okay, so that's a whole other topic called volcanology, which is fascinating. Um, so it kind of depends on where you are and what the rock is made out of as to what it does, like its water content, etc. Okay. But notice that they're inland up a little bit because of this diagonal of the subduction plate. But how come the oceanic is the one that has to go down? Well, that's because it is more dense. It is thinner, but it's denser. We know about density from all the activities we've done in our gizmo. Right? So it is the one that will sink because the continental crust is less dense. Okay, remember the gray rock? That's what this is made out of. And then as a whole, there are lots of rocks, but the continental crust as a whole is mainly granite. And so it will float, float over the continental crust and it goes down. Okay? Our example that we saw was Mount St. Helens in the Cascade Mountains. This would be the Pacific Plate and this would be the North American Plate. The one in the middle is oceanic oceanic. So think of Japan. So see your example, Japan. It's going to make, we didn't talk about the trench already, sorry. It's going to make a trench. When those two come together, they kind of get pulled downward to make a V-shape. This is not a valley, so it has to do with mountains. This V-shape downward, um, 
these are going to be lower. So like the Marianas Trench is going to be lower because it's already in the ocean. It's already down relatively. But this time, neither one of them is made a continental. So it can't be less dense. Instead, the older oceanic plate. And once it starts, that's one that's going to keep going. But the, it goes down because it's older because it's more dense. So think about grandma, grandpa, maybe they, like my dad, for example. He used to be six foot. He's now about 5'10". He's also 78. So gravity has been pulling on him and compressing his spinal column longer. Gravity's been acting on him and compressing him. So he's shorter than he was when he was my age. Okay. It's the same idea for this rock. It gets smushed by gravity, making it more compact and more dense, so it's the one that gets subducted. And this time it does still make volcanoes, but this is in the ocean, so it'll be volcanic islands, and they usually happen because it's on a think like a fence line, a boundary, there's going to be several of them in a row. So they call it a volcanic island arc because they usually have a curve to them. Not a lot of straight lines naturally occurring on the earth. Okay. Then the last one, continental, continental. Okay, so notice nothing's going down. There's no magma happening. You've got two continental plates doing a head-on collision. They have nowhere to go but up. So you uplift the, the rock and the dirt, those are called uplifted mountains as opposed to volcanic mountains. But that's the process. The process is called uplifting because it is literally lifted up. You know those crazy scientists and their names. Okay, so this is the process. And this would be something like the Himalayas. Okay, so like Mount St. Helens. You've got the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate doing a head-on collision and going upward. And they continue to push on each other. So you would think that the mountains would continually get taller and taller and taller. And they do, but there's also weathering and erosion that's happening to kind of keep it in check. This is as far as we got today. There's three convergent plate boundaries, like combos. So next time I see you, we'll do the divergent and transform pretty quick. There's only a couple things to write down. And we will be doing our um, snack tectonics. So make sure you remember which thing you need to bring if you're in person or at home to have them ready. Remember, you need icing graham crackers, and a fruit roll-up, all right, and then like a workspace for it too. Okay. But um, if you sent me messages, just FYI, I came in to like 400 emails today because of being out with my surgery, so I'm working my way through them and grading. Just be patient with me, okay? Thanks, guys.